We are now with the Minister of Transport, um, Honorable Minister Rutimi Chibike Amechi is now with us in the studio. We'll be talking about rail transportation shortly, or I, I think generally the transport sector, but focusing largely uh, on railway transportation and getting updates as to where we are. Just don't forget that uh, just last week, the president commissioned a groundbreaking ceremony somewhere in Katsina uh, to mark the Kano Maradi rail line. There have been, there's been a bit of controversy over that. He's cleared the air, but of course he can never clear the air enough on that. And then of course bring us up to speed as to the other projects that are going on around the country. But that will be in a moment after this break. Please stay with us. Indeed, the Minister of Transportation is here. The Minister of Transport, I think, um, Rotimi Abmechi, is here with us in the studio, and we're talking about rail transportation. I did mention earlier uh, that we witnessed the groundbreaking ceremony of the Kano uh, Maradi rail line, which was done in Katsina, in Makira Katsina. The project is expected to cost $1.8 billion. Um, it's going to span for, it's going to be carried out in about 36 months and uh, is expected to freight about 3 million people and 1 million tons of goods a year. We'll be getting more details from the minister as to, you know, why that choice. Because if we're talking about the rail lines, we're talking about the congesting the port and making Nigeria an export hub. Uh, are we starting in the right place, so to speak? I, I'm getting a bit... Um, I'm beginning to think that one should ask people or ask Nigerians. When we did under... I think it was under Basanjo's regime, we talked about taking a pipeline from Nigeria to Ghana. Why didn't people question it? Why are we questioning just going to, going to Maradi in Niger State? Nobody, nobody has been able to address that. But uh, beyond that, maybe I need to explain to Nigerians, we're hired by Nigerians, actually, so they pay our salaries. Maybe they need to, I need to explain, but I'm becoming a bit tired of explaining. Look, this feasibility study was not done by the Buhari's government. Mm -hmm. It was done on that present good luck, Jonathan. I don't see what is wrong with even the feasibility study. Neither do I see anything wrong in the decision by the present good luck, Jonathan's government to proceed with a rail from uh, Kano. To Maradi. I've jokingly said to everybody, my wife is, is not from Niger Republic, neither is the wife of the president from Niger Republic. In fact, I saw a joke that said that uh, the president is, has a root uh, in Niger Republic. Now, the reason I guess that the president, good Lord Jonathan, did that is because of the economic viability of that, of that root. Mm. So, I, I think, uh, I, I presume that you're answering this question based on what you have heard previously. Yes. Yeah, but th this is, this question has been asked without any... I'm coming to that. Without any bias or yeah. without any prejudice to what has been said before or, you know, what has been done before. I'm just asking, given your response, your uh, earlier response, uh, I think, to my colleague, Shewa Kimbalui, as to, you know, the reason which is to decongest the ports and make na na the nation an export hub and be more competitive. I want to imagine that, you know, it will be, a, it's supposed to be a longer line of chain of events, so to speak. Yes, sir, sir, I'm, coming, I'm, I'm coming to that. Where is that, where is this project in that chain of events? Yes, I'm coming to that. First, is, is, is there, there's an ECOWAS decision on connecting the ECOWAS countries. This is one of those tracks. And I'm sure that must have also informed President Gulo Jonathan's decision to, to do a study on it. Now, what this does is that at the time you complete Lagos to Kano, what you've done is the movement of domestic goods that probably some will be for export, some will be for import. Now, I've said it before that there's, we're not competitive enough. Our, our transportation system is not competitive enough to move goods from hinter or landlocked country, countries. So imagine Niger that has borders with us is able to move goods from Benin Republic when we have a bigger port. Imagine that sometimes most of these countries go as far as Ghana and Ivory Coast, as far as Ivory Coast, when you can go to the Nigerian seaport. And they have given several reasons, and I have restated these reasons to, to, to Nigerians. Talked about customs, talked about immigration, talked about crime, talked about police checkpoints. And all. Now, the cost of doing business in Nigeria is higher than the cost of doing business in the Republic. So, to reduce the cost of doing business and improve our competitiveness, to also ensure that 
both Lagos, Kano, and some other parts of Nigeria are able to gain from economic activities emanating from movement of goods from Niger Republic. We have to make it connect the rail from Kano to Manadi. And look, just imagine the national goods, the national cargo, uranium, gold. So imagine that you're able to move them from uh, Manadi to Lagos. And let's assume they're not able to move that day. So they sleep in Lagos, they will pay for hotel, they have to eat food, they have to take a drink possibly, and some other expenses they may have to buy, go to your shop and all. There are a lot of economic activities that you manage from that alone. And doing that will not only grow the economy, it will help in the repayment of, of uh, the cost of construction. Having a conversation with the Prime Minister of Niger Republic when I visited to seek approval for uh, our intention to go into their territory, he said to us, we will try as much as possible and get in, go into an agreement that most of their national cargoes would pass through Nigeria. What? Indeed, that, would, that sort of agreement would be very necessary because we also have to ask whether they're going to be funding any part no, they don't have to. Of, the, of the project. They don't have to because we're just getting 20 kilometers into, into Niger Republic, that's one. And two, we are the soliciting for their cargoes. And I've told you the advantages of, of moving their cargoes. But it's going to benefit them as well because if we're able to secure the, them coming on, you know, on that particular line, I, we are hoping that because it will be competitive, it will be cheaper for their businessmen to use the line. Isn't that correct? But don't forget that nobody knows what next step the Republic will take. Supposing they make it cheaper <laughs> for them more than we. But we don't know. Well, it depends on when it is completed, who is the minister at that point, and how he's able to make to make them buy into it. But I think we will not waste that money because there's no basis for doing that. If no, the, the idea, will, I mean, it, sh it should be captured in the feasibility study. We did. First, you don't do any rail line without a feasibility study. There are two key components you must do, in the, apart from the uh, bill of quantities, or bill of uh, BEME, that's bill of engineering measurement. Uh, apart from that, you have to do feasibility studies and you have to do an uh, ESIA. Those are the three things you must do to be able to construct a rail line. So it would be, it'd be wrong to just for any Nigerian to think that we are just crazy to waste funds to, or to borrow $1.9 billion for the construction of railway to, to Manadi. What is that in need of? It's remarkable. I mean, that the first and foremost, this is the first one we're not given to the Chinese. This is being constructed by a Portuguese company, we understand. Is it Ento Angel or so? Mota, Mota Angel. Angel. That's the name of the company. Do we have any agreement with the Portuguese government as a result of that? It's funded by oh, Europe. Me. Don't forget. It's funded by Europe uh, through their ECA. And uh, uh, we don't just call the Chinese and give to them. And for any project the Chinese take, they come with funding. So when this Portuguese company came and said, we are coming with our own funding, we didn't have a choice but to engage them. So it can be an American company, it can be a Nigerian company, anybody who bring, comes forward with, with the necessary funds, we engage them. Yeah, you've talked about the ports. The ports are another kettle of fish. I, I mean, because part of the reason why people are asking about where this, where this is situated in the chain of events, if this is about maximizing uh, the our ports, so to speak, you know, where are we right now in terms of decongesting our ports? We understand that we have one of the <coughs> most expensive rates of movement from just the ports to warehouses, even within Lagos. Uh, and you've heard LCCI cry out loud, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria cry out loud over this particular problems they're, they're having with logistics. I know that, yes, there's a, a, a plan now to link in and with Papa. However, you know, while that is about to start, what is happening with the congestion of the ports? Uh, I thought you would wait and ask, because the, the responsibility of Minister of Transport begins and ends at the seaport. It doesn't include the roads. So it's when the road, when we get the road to a motorable condition that those goods will move out. But the easiest, question, the easiest way to answer that question is to say that we are already in, at the seaport with the rail. So most of the cargoes will go by rail out of the seaport. So I expect that in the next few months, we should begin to decongest the seaport clearly, asking, asking, I will talk with my colleague, uh, the, if I have, I have, and he told me that already there's a presidential approval on the, uh, 
the tonnage that uh, that can go on our roads. The rest should go on the rail. Why are we not enforcing it? Why is the Ministry of Transport not enforcing it? We're not enforcing it because the rail is not everywhere. But as soon as we conclude what we're doing inside the seaport, we will enforce it between Lagos and Ibadan. Mm. Because some people said, shouldn't that be where we would have focused our energies in the first few years of this administration, you know, for instance? Wouldn't that have had a huge impact? You smile. Wouldn't that have had a significant impact that would be felt uh, on the, in the economy by transporters and for those who are moving goods inwards into the country? You know the, you know the, you know the funny thing? Nigeria, has, it takes nine months to have a baby. It does indeed, I should know. I just had one. Okay, so it's congrats. But again, why I say that is that it's not the day you marry that you have a baby. The day we were sworn, you don't forget we had applied to, we had applied to the Chinese government for a loan to do Lagos Pardon. The same time we applied for that loan, the same time we applied for Kano Kaduna, it took almost two years or a year plus to get the loan approval for Lagos Pardon. As we're talking today, we're here to get the approval for Kano Kaduna. You get the point? So it's not as if we didn't do anything. That's why I say it takes nine months to have a baby. Because by the time we apply for the loan, they processed it and all that took a year plus. If not, that, our intention is, look, and that was the president's directive, was very clear. When we came, a lot of those contracts were awarded under President of Passenger's regime. They didn't go to the seaport. The president insisted that there has to be an extension to the seaport. Mm. So we ascended from Mebute Meta to Papa just because we know that that is the key to movement of goods. Mm. On the one hand, we, ha we apply for loans for some projects. On the other hand, we ask companies who want to come and work with us to bring their own funding. The same now. If you, say, if you say bring your funding, you have to apply. When I say bring your funding, that is if you're coming to us to say, uh, well, we want to construct this rail, we have the capacity and all that, we will say, do you have a source of funding for us to apply? Nigeria must apply. They are not taking the loan. We will take the loan. So what I mean by apply is that the Chinese government said, oh, yeah, we're ready to source the fund from China Exim Bank. Once China Exim Bank says, yes, we have the money, then the Nigerian government will apply to China Exim Bank. The reason I, I, I pose this question in this manner is, you know, which one was going to come first for us in, in terms of the order in which we have ordered some of these projects? Uh, there are some projects that were already sitting pretty. For instance, the... Um, Abuja Kaduna rail line was already about to be active. We came and finished, and you know, and, and the project started. Now people are talking about more carriages, and more people are, you know, still using that particular route. Um, but which ones? How did we prioritize the projects uh, when you took office? Well, all, all, all the projects the president had named were all priority projects to us: Lagos Kano, Lagos Kalaba. These were the three priority projects, and these were the three essential routes in the Nigerian railway system. The only new one that we're adding now is the central line, which begins from Abuja to um, Baro, from Baro to Lokoja, Lokoja to Itabe, Itabe to Wari. We already have Itabe to Wari, even though we have to extend it to a new seaport. No, so there's no particular one that has higher descent than the other. It is just that at the time you have uh, uh, approved the contract, just like contracts, all the contracts have been approved. It now becomes how do you get the money? The company says, ah, talk to talk to, to the uh, uh, government. They are ready to give us one. But the process of getting the loan is what takes time. Do we request for the loan? Yes, we do request for the loan. We requested for loan for Lagos Calabar. In fact, I was in a meeting yesterday with the Minister for Finance. Uh, we were talking about how to uh, uh, get the negotiation going on the Lagos Calabar. We've also requested for uh, Potakot Meduguri. We're also talking about how to get. So all of them depends on at what point in time we get the loan approval. The one for Kanumadu was very fast. And why was it fast? Because by the time they indicated that they had money, we invited the bank to join us in our meeting for negotiation of the contract. Mm. So they were part of the process from beginning to the end, unlike the other ones. So we have the money now in the kit for the Kanumadu. Yes, yes, but we have to wait for the approval of the cabinet for the terms of the contract, terms of the contract of the loan, not the terms of the contract, because they've already approved terms of the contract for the contract itself, for the construction. So we have to wait for the approval of the uh, terms of the contract by the cabinet, and then the approval by the, by the uh, National Assembly. So, so give or take, there's <coughs> a six months which is expected to be the time frame in which the Kano Maradi is delivered. Will six months? 36, oh, 36 months. months yeah. 
it will take off, we'll start counting by what time, give or take? Uh, very difficult question to answer. You'll be making me Senate President, you'll be making me the President of Nigeria. Because it will come to the cabinet, the terms will be discussed. It will be making me SGF, not the President of Nigeria. Because the SGF has to bring it to the cabinet, the cabinet will discuss it, the President has to forward it to the National Assembly, the National Assembly has to approve it. But Rest assured, we were commencing construction. Yeah, but as Minister yeah. of Transport, I mean, you you are... You those, those are facts that are not within my control. Yes, indeed, they are not. But you are hopeful that by so-and-so time... No, no. You, you, you are hopeful did that you see, it should, did you it should that, start. That, that, that drama in the National Assembly. That's what's affecting us in the Chinese loan. The Chinese wants to be assured, before they approve the loan, that the National Assembly will not continue with this uh, sovereign, uh, sovereign, what do you call it, uh, uh, clause. The clause it's, of sovereignty. Yes. And it was just a normal clause in every, every such loan contract, for which it doesn't mean that the president of China will be the president of Nigeria if we don't pay. It simply means that, look, you, you waive your sovereignty so that we can go to court. It is not, if you don't put that clause, when they go to court, we say, no, they can't take us to court. We're a sovereign nation. You, you get the point. But somebody now goes to town. Oh, we well, didn't know that we have waived our sovereignty. They took over Nigeria, and that was a joke uh, where they put the president and I and say, "Oh, look at the, go the new governor of Kasina State. His name is Chu Chang Wang." Uh, all those funny things, but not support in uh, in our papa. I think I need to have that conversation with MPA for them to clear. We need to do something to clear because you see, it, it's it's against what the ISPO. Mm -hmm. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, I know that largely, you know, are you, f transport is what you'd like to focus largely on. However, we cannot run away from the fact that w other factors external to transport could have an adverse impact on all the efforts that we're doing trying to build infrastructure across the country. Are you afraid, are you, are you agitated in any way uh, that you know, some of the skirmishes we've been seeing across the country could have any impact on you know, the in infrastructure which you have been trying to put in place? You know, guess why I'm laughing? I can't guess. Okay, you know, you and I had a conversation before on air where I said you're my friend and you were trying to deny me. As my friend, you've known the f picture of uh, somebody who goes out and wants to confront such problems now. Now, I have come to the reality of the fact that, look, focus on, just focus on transportation. Let each person or each agency manage their own responsibility. So if you want to ask me of such external or external factors, mm -hmm. you must know that my, my, how do you put it, my power to respond to such factors will be dependent on what authority I have. Indeed, but I'm just wondering if, as minister, you're, you're agitated in any way. Oh, of course. Uh, in every Nigerian, there are things you expect to be done that are not done. Man. What will you do? It's not mm. your responsibility. Mm. Right? What? So you expect that each agency, and some ministers may no, not Not know. just agency. I'm talking about the skirmishes that have been happening across the country, the security situation. Oh, no, no, no. Been, don't get me involved. I, I'm not going to want to get you involved. I was I just wondering, about, I was I was about wondering about if, if you had any, you know, any fear on your mind that with the way things were going, you know, the infrastructure which you are working so hard to put in place could be affected uh, because people could wake up one morning and, uh, you know, destroy them. Well, very good. You know, there's a story, there's a story in my village that in the morning, when uh, people are felling trees to farm, monkeys are jumping about celebrating. At night, that's their bedroom. They find out there's no bedroom again. So when you destroy transport infrastructure, it's your business. But first, if, I, if, if you, uh, luckily for us, we're not the agency, we're the, I think the only a, a government agency that has its own police command. Mm. So we have the Maritime Police Command, um, domiciled at MPA. We have the Railway Police Command, domiciled with Nigerian Railway Corporation. If we see you near our infrastructure, we we'll deploy the police. Mm. But if anything happens to the infrastructure, who loses? The, the country. Well, we're hoping that you know it will not just go up all in. You know, the work will be there for Nigerians to actually reap the benefits. We have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. Our Minister of Transport Chibike Amechi has been with us on Sunrise Daily, and hopefully, we should be able to get him back another time. Thank you so much for watching this morning. I'm Alpo Ogun Yusuf. Well, it's really wish we could continue. And so many messages, of course, limitless and uh, largeless ones right there, but we completely out of time. I'm Ayo Makini. Have a wonderful day. I'm Chang Balanusaw. We'll see you tomorrow.